Hello everyone and welcome back to Real Life Struggles. Today we're joined again by Dr. and I put that in quotes, Kent Hoven, who thinks that he can disprove evolution. My prediction is he'll spend a lot of time not even talking about evolution and then use 20 year old PowerPoint slides. Anyway, let's join him and see what he has to say. Atheism is one of the dumbest religions in the history of humanity. I think that's a new record. We are not even five seconds into this video and Kent Hovind has already said something extremely stupid. According to the dictionary, a religion is the belief in and worship of a superhuman power or powers, especially a god or gods, or a particular system of faith and worship. You might notice that the definition of atheism is that they do not believe in any gods at all. I think if somebody chooses to believe that, that's perfectly fine. I don't care what they believe, but they should stop calling it science. Nobody calls it science. Only confused young earth creationists conflate science and atheism or science and religion. Science doesn't care about your religion and neither should you. Hello, Doctor. Nice to see you and thank you for accepting the invitation. Yeah, you don't have to call him doctor. He doesn't have a doctorate. He bought one from a diploma mill and his thesis reads like an eighth grade book report. So don't call him doctor. Well, thank you, sir. First question is this, tell us about your ministry and vision. Well, if I had to answer the question, I'd say his vision is to continue lying to people using 20 year old PowerPoint slides. Well, the, the Bible says very clearly that God made everything in six days. Well, you think it says that because you think the Bible was written by King James in the 17th century. It wasn't. The textbooks in school teach the kids the earth is billions of years old and dinosaurs lived millions of years ago. Yes, I find it absolutely amazing that a science textbook would teach kids science when they're taking a science class. And somebody's dead wrong about those facts. And so, Well, they may be off by a few thousand years, but they're not dead wrong. Also, why are you recording everything outside? Our ministry is to strengthen people's faith that the Bible is indeed the Word of God. See, I don't have a problem with that. I just have a problem with the way you interpret it and how you teach people to not believe in science because you think it goes against what you believe in the Bible. This is exactly where God preserved his words. Then maybe you should let people read the Bible in the way that it was written and stop twisting it for your own agenda. That would be really nice. And so I think the scientific evidence points clearly to uh, what we call a young Earth, but 6,000 is not young. No, there's not. There is zero evidence that the Earth is only 6,000 years old. Radiometric decay alone disproves that. 6,000 is pretty old. For humans? Yes. For the Earth? Not at all. So that's uh, our ministry is to teach the scientific evidence that uh, <clears throat> the Bible is true. There is no scientific evidence that the Bible is true. You believe the Bible because you have faith in God and faith in the Bible. The very closest I could think would be archaeological evidence, but that's not what he's talking about. He thinks the beginning chapters of Genesis are a scientific textbook, not a historical and theological book. That means dinosaurs had to live with man. Yeah, no it doesn't. Dinosaurs died about 65 million years ago. Uh, they called them a different name, called them dragons. No, they didn't. Dinosaurs are what we dig up as fossils. They lived and died a very long time ago. Dragons are a mythological creature invented by other people. And the word dinosaur was just made up 200 years ago. Then why don't modern translations of the Bible say dinosaur, where it used to say dragon? We teach the scientific evidence that the Earth is uh, created in six days, about 6,000 years ago. Again. There is no scientific evidence that the Earth was created in six days, 6,000 years ago. If there was scientific evidence for that, then people would become young Earth creationists without reading the Bible. Nobody has ever believed in young Earth creationism without first taking a literal interpretation of Genesis and then trying to find evidence to back up their beliefs which is the opposite of what science does and should do. And that means God owns it, and he makes the rules as far as, you know, the Ten Commandments and all that kind of stuff. Mr. Hoven, yes, I refuse to call you doctor. Number one, what does the Ten Commandments and everything else you just mentioned have to do with science? Number two, the title of this is Why Evolution is Wrong. 
you've talked for a couple minutes and you haven't even gotten to your point about evolution. Are we going to get to the point anytime soon? And we're going to be uh, judged by those rules. So you need to get ready for that judgment day. That's why I try to live my life to be kind to everyone, even atheists. We believe uh, everybody will face God and with our sin. And if you don't have Jesus Christ and his death on the cross to pay for your sins, then you're going to be in serious trouble. Yes, that's why I treat atheists with kindness. And I make videos like these trying to show people that the Bible and science actually do go together. Because I don't want people to leave the church because they can't reconcile Genesis with scientists. I also don't whack atheists. I show them God's love. 52 years ago, I said, Lord, I'm a sinner. Kent Hovind continues to ramble about a lot of things that aren't the point of the video. So let's fast forward and get to the point. <laughs> I thought he was done talking, but he still keeps talking about things that are not science. Let's skip ahead some more. Hey, we finally gotten to the point of the video. Let's see what he has to say. Also, I want to add, theologically, I have no problem with evolution. Scientifically, it probably is the way things happened. I just don't understand enough about it because I was raised as a young earth creationist to be able to say 100% that's what happened. So as I'm counteracting what Kent Hovind has to say, I'm just saying it as what he gets wrong about what the theory says. I just want to, uh, just I want you to just give a brief uh, views on how evolution is wrong. Well, whenever you discuss <clears throat> the topic of evolution, you have to define exactly what you're talking about. Yep, and you're going to define it incorrectly. Because that word is kind of slippery. There are six different meanings to the word. I bet at least three of them are made up by you, and only one of the real definitions has anything to do with what the guy asked. Biological evolution. There is what we often call microevolution where that is changes within the same kind. No, microevolution is change within a species or a small group of organisms. Kind is an undefined term from the Hebrew Bible. Nobody knows what it means. Not even young earth creationists. There are now 195 varieties of dogs that are recognized by the dog kennel producers, you know. Not sure where he's going with this, but I can almost guarantee he's going to be wrong about something. 195 varieties of dogs, from the Little Chihuahua to the Great Dane. They're all still recognizable as dogs, nobody argues about that. And everybody would agree, I believe, that they all came from a common ancestor called a dog. I already know where he's going with this. He's gonna say that a, a bear never gave birth to a dog, so therefore evolution is true. And once again, you're wrong. They all came from a common ancestor called a wolf. So that is what we call microevolution. It's a variation within the very same kind of animal. It's a variation within a species or a small group of animals, but nice try. Farmers have selectively bred goats over the years to get goats that give more milk. Some goats give more meat. Some goats can handle colder climate or higher altitude. Yeah, yeah, you're correct. I hate to say that. But also, when are you going to get to the point of the video? They've now discovered they've selectively bred 210 different varieties of goats. Make your point or I'm going to start fast forwarding again. They probably had a common ancestor called a goat. So your plan to disprove evolution is to show how evolution is true. Not a very good plan. That is not evolution. That is microevolution or simple variation within the same kind. You just gave the textbook definition of evolution and then stated it's not evolution. And again, there's no such thing as a kind. It's still a goat. It may still be a goat, but it looks nothing like it did when humans first started domesticating goats. You couldn't take one of those breeds you talked about and turn it back into the original goat. It's completely different. And also, just to prove you wrong again, dogs came from wolves. Wolves mutated and were artificially selected to turn into the dogs that we have now. The dog is different from the wolf, and the dog will never become a wolf again, no matter how you breed it. So the evolutionist will look at that and say, wow, look at all these dog varieties, all these goat varieties. 
That proves goats and dogs are related. No, that's not what they say at all. They study the fossil record. They notice that everything seemed to come from something simpler. And when they trace it back, there's a common ancestor to both of them. But it has nothing to do with how many breeds of dogs or goats or chickens or anything that humans have been able to create. You should be ashamed of yourselves for A, lying, and B, twisting science so badly. No, it does not. That's where it stops. Then why do you spread lies? You're correct, it's not. And yes, you should stop. In fact, you should delete this video and every other video you've ever made. Science shows us <clears throat> dogs can produce a variety of dogs and goats can produce a variety of goats. That's science. Yes, and with natural and artificial selection, eventually those varieties of dogs might become so different from the original dogs you started with that they could become an entirely new species. Kind of like how domesticating wolves gave us a new species of canis. To think it goes beyond that is religion. Actually, it's called examining the evidence without any presuppositions. Something you would know nothing about. Nobody's ever seen a dog produce a non-dog. Yeah, this is Kent Hovind's big gotcha moment. Nobody saw a bird lay an egg and then all of a sudden a crocodile jumped out. That's not what the theory of evolution says. Everything reproduces after itself. It's small changes that add up over a long period of time to where eventually what you started out with is not the same as what you end up with. Or a goat produce a non-goat. It's never been observed. And as I just explained, it never will be observed. It's not part of science. No, it's not. So why do you keep making that claim? Science deals with things we can observe, study, test, and demonstrate. Yes, it does, but not in the way that you're about to claim. Now they can believe capital B, believe that goats and bananas are related. I can believe, with a capital B, you're capable of intelligent thoughts, but I'm not holding my breath. And they do. Evolutionists believe goats and bananas have a common ancestor. Yes, they do, but not the way you claim. A banana wasn't peeled in a goat fellow. I said, that's fine. I don't care what you believe, but it's not science. Well, you can believe in young earth creation if you want, but it's also not science. Don't call it science. And don't make our kids learn that in school like it's part of science, because it's not. I think it's nonsense. Right back at you. Don't force kids to learn pseudoscience like young earth creation, because that's what it is. Pseudoscience. It's not science. Just like you said. But they, they're welcome to believe it. I don't care what religion they have. So what he's trying to say here is that the acceptance of evolution is a religion. But to be honest, the study of science should not rely on one's interpretation of the book of Genesis. But they should admit that evolution is a religion. No, it's not. It's a branch of science, biology. And you should admit that you're biased against anything that goes against your interpretation of Genesis. That's why you won't accept the fact that the universe is billions and billions of years old. It is not a scientific belief at all. You are correct. It's not a belief. It's a large collection of evidence that most scientists think is the best explanation for why life on Earth is here as it is now. It's something that people have chosen deliberately to believe in. Okay, people that accept evolution believe in it like you believe in gravity. To them, it's the best explanation for the evidence that has been gathered and tested in spite of the complete lack of evidence for it. So you yourself give two examples of evolution and then state that evolution never happened. Hmm. Nobody's ever seen a dog produce a non-dog, period. And nobody ever will see a dog produce a non-dog. They will see a dog produce a slightly less dog, which then will produce a slightly, slightly less dog, which will then produce a slightly, slightly, slightly less dog, and on and on until eventually it produces a mostly something else. So I contend that the evolution theory is actually a religion. Well, I contend you're a tax cheat with the fake doctorate who knows nothing about the subjects that you talk about. Depending what you mean by the word, and I do a lot of debates and I'm careful to define it first. Do you plan on doing that anytime soon? Because you haven't given an accurate definition of what evolution is yet. But you keep arguing that it didn't happen and that it's scientifically impossible for it to happen. Microevolution is perfectly fine. 
I, th I don't think we should call it that. I think we should call it something else to avoid confusion. The only people that make a distinction between micro and macro evolution are people like you that have no idea what it is. Just call it what it is, evolution. Like call it variation within the kind. But if you're going to do that, you first have to define what a kind is. You can't do it. Answers in Genesis can't do it. And the Institute for Creation Research can't do it. Well, that certainly happens. You probably look different than your parents and your children look different than you. Okay, you're still human. Okay, but let's say humanity lives another 500,000 million years. Do you really think we're going to be exactly the same as we are now? I don't. That's not evolution. It's a variation of, of the same kind. You really shouldn't use the word kind until you can actually define it and not have to change it every five minutes to suit what you're talking about. And the Bible says clearly 10 times in the first chapter and 10 more times in the flood story. So 20 times in the first seven chapters of the Bible, it says the animals and plants will bring forth after their kind. And that's all anybody's ever seen. And within the theory of evolution, that's exactly what things do. They reproduce something that is the same as what they are with just some small mutations and small changes. There are now a thousand varieties of apple trees that have been selectively bred by farmers. Some of the apples can handle the cold climate better. Some taste sweeter and some grow bigger. I don't know, more juice or whatever they're trying to do. But there's a thousand varieties of apples now and they might have had a common ancestor called an apple. Repeating the same dumb thing doesn't make you sound smart, it makes you sound dumb. That is not evolution. That is natural and artificial selection, which is part of the theory of evolution. They go further than just macro evolution, though, saying that dogs and apples are related. They want you to believe in cosmic evolution, that everything was created by nothing, exploding. And here we are with the young earth creationist fake definitions of evolution. Biological evolution has nothing to do with the word evolution used with cosmology. That is just a generic things change over time, not life changes over time. And we don't believe things exploded. It was a rapid expansion of space and time. The Big Bang, where nothing exploded and made everything. The Big Bang, where the energy of the universe was condensed into a very small singularity, which rapidly expanded and after billions of years, eventually created what we see now. Now that is real stupid. Actually, what's stupid is not realizing basic science. The universe is currently expanding and it's increasing its rate of expansion. So if you dial that backwards, at one point it must have been very small. And none of this means that it couldn't have been the method that God used to make the universe. So I cover in my videos I do on drdino.com. People can watch all my videos. Please don't. People like him don't need any views. There's a little bit more left of the video, but it's a lot of religious talk with a little science talk. I'll dig into it and I'll make a part two for next time. I hope you can see, like most young earth creationists, he pretty much gets everything wrong when it comes to science and then says science doesn't work. Hope you enjoyed the video. I have plenty of more, including one very popular video covering this same person. Thanks for joining me and watching to the end and come back for the next video.